you know, the younger generation. We've got a better voice than the older generation. It's of course the main man, Virgil van Dijk. This is not my dad's team. This is not Alan Shearer's team. This is our team. I'm 24 years old. In the next couple of years, I think Salah makes that right wing spot his own. He's down that hill. He's, he'll go down as the greatest right winger in Premier League history. But my mates that don't support Liverpool, they were like, why are they so excited about this guy? These are the players that Jurgen Klopp turns into superstars. If you put an, an all-time Liverpool eleven together, Mo Salah's in it. That's, that very that's good enough for me. I think he's, he's the perfect clock player. It, 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 he's uh, everything he asks of him and more. The way he fights for the ball, the way he presses, his interchangeability of, uh, along the front three. Yes, my young box peoples, peoples. Season's over, but we're not over. We're still here, me and Ben. We're still grafting, still grafting. We're still here doing, I don't know, doing, doing, doing what, doing what you enjoy. Talking nonsense, mate. Talking pretty much, nonsense, just, to be honest. Yeah, uh, GSC, comment number one. Hi guys. Hi man. Uh, what kit is that? I don't know. That looks like an old no kit. Idea. I can't tell. It might be a, it might be a, it might be a fan make it. Who knows? But yeah, uh, guys, we're back. As you can tell by the title, it's a keep or sell video. Who are we keeping? Who are we selling? Who are we loaning? Who are we getting? Mm. I don't know. Nobody knows except for Klopp and his team. And Chris Khan. And Chris Khan. Yeah, and Chris Khan, of course. Shout out the number one source in world football, Chris Khan. Um. That actually wasn't sarcasm, man. Oh, that's actually sarcasm. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, Chris. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, like uh, Omer, oh, that's me. Like I said, smash the like <laughs> button, people. Smash the like button, people, please. Like this off season, it's it's gonna be. It's not gonna be a slog because we're here. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. Uh, we're gonna make it entertaining for you. We're gonna mm-hmm. give you some some excitement, some um, some uh, some breaking transfer news. I'm sure we're gonna have um, fun shows lined up. I don't know what exactly is lined up, but there's definitely fun stuff to be lined up. Um, but yeah, uh, look. Before we just get into this, uh, look. This is the first show me and Ben have done since uh, the weekend, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm over it. It's done. Me too. Me too. I was over it. I was probably over it on. I wasn't over it, but like, I was probably annoyed for half an hour. And then I was in Liverpool, and I saw the people in Liverpool straight after the game. Yeah, people were down, but we all came together, and that showed on Sunday at the parade. What a parade! Name me a one football club in world football that does that after probably two devastatingly heartbreaking weeks. Ends. Yeah. Yes. That's two very long words. Devastatingly heartbreaking. <laughs> um, smash the like button for that, people. Um, but yeah, um, we're just gonna get into it. Me, I'm gonna rattle through. Um, this is actually Ben's idea, so shout out Ben for this. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna rattle through the squad. Me and Ben will have a bit of chit chat. Who do we keep? Mm. Do do we like? Do any of you want to like? Look, we'll start with Allison. Like. Do any of you want to sell, Alison? Nah, you're, you're, I mean, you're, few, you're, yeah. A few of these are just gonna literally be dead easy. Um, yeah, Alison is he is what he is. I want him to be the keeper for the rest of my life. You know, give him a lifetime deal kind of thing. Yeah. Alison's one of those players that I would do anything for. I just love him, Alison Becker. Well, that is my goalkeeper. Um, you know, last season I, I often allude back to this, but when his his father tragically passed away. And he dipped in form a bit, but I just wanted to run on the pitch and hug him. Like that's all. Yeah. He just looked done. And then, obviously, this season he had the the summer off to you know maybe yeah. go see his family, which he hadn't had chance to do because of COVID. And look how he's come back. He's come back in the best form of his life, in my opinion. This is the best version of him we've seen, and he's the best keeper in the world, bar none. Um, unfortunately. On Saturday, there was another lanky guy in the other goal who was... He had more to do than Alisson, but yeah, I mean, that was the difference. Just Courtois making those ridiculous saves. But look, Alisson, best keeper in the world for me. Facts. Nobody would ever even consider moving this guy on, ever. Mate, 
Absolutely. Um, yeah, but Ben, mate, how you doing? Uh, I'll just address the elephant in the room that Ali's brought up. <sighs> Listen, uh, I miss my people already, bro. Honestly, I, I keep trying to go on Twitter because that's what my, my natural day, daily routine is to just, when I'm not doing anything, go on Twitter, have a look, tweet a load of nonsense, probably some nabby prop in there somewhere. Um <laughs> And it's gone, that 8.2K following which I'd built up, which it's not the end of the world. There's more important things in life that I need to focus on, um, a number of things that are way more important than a number on a screen. But I, it, it was just, it just hurt me, to be fair, because I came out of the barbers and I tried to put a tweet out. And it just wouldn't have any of it. That my account had gone. Um, the worst thing is they don't even tell you what the tweet was. And I can't, off the top of my head, remember putting out a tweet um, that... Um, you know, was deemed worthy of a uh, suspension. But what I will say, Ali, between you and me, if you see a new FT account called Alexander the Great, just follow it back in it. That's all I'll say. Ben's about to take over the FT game. You know, all those big FT accounts, if you're watching, Sean, Ryan, Squeeze, boys. There's a new Alexander the Great, man. Alexander the Great's coming in. But yeah, uh, everybody like the more likes we get in this uh video, the more likely it is that Ben gets his account back. And I know I have appealed chat. for it, and it is in God's hands, but I just I think once they're gone, they're gone. But we'll yeah. see. Look, you never know. Stranger things have happened. We've we've seen Istanbul, so <laughs> so, so so we we might get Ben's Twitter account back. You know what I mean? But um yeah, let's go straight into the show. Um, Eunice, look, we're going to get into who we want. I'd say as we go along, I've seen some great names in there. Nkunku, Bellingham, mm. Gavi, Bissouma. Back up right back, Calvin Ramsey. I reckon that guy's, he's, we've got him, we've got him. Um, so we've got Fabio Carvalho already. So the next era, Klopp era, I call it era two. Klopp era two is coming your way, people. People think, oh, this Liverpool squad, they're all hitting 30. First of all, 30 is not old in terms of footballers now. Like, maybe back in the day when you were 30, yeah, you've got two, three years left. But you guys, do you see the nutrition? Do you see the the, the fitness of these players? James Milner is 36 and he's fit as a, I guess just fit as a fiddle. That's the only one I can think of. Um, but, Look, slowly and slowly, Canate, Diaz, Jota, all these players, we're building in a new team and it's exciting. So, guys, mm. stay tuned. We're not going anywhere. Klopp's, Klopp's dynasty is just, well, it's, it's started, but we're still there. We're still we're still yet to peak. Uh, but yeah, Ben, I mean, we, we've I mentioned them, his name already. Alisson, it's 100% keep, like, I mean, yeah, you, I just said what I needed to much. say. Yeah. You said mm. what you needed to say, so we're just going to rattle through. Um, On to uh, the second, the best number two goalkeeper in the world, Mr. Kelleher. Um, surely another keep that? Yeah, 100%. I think this was... Uh, he's had good moments before when he's come in for the odd game, but I think this was the season where Kelleher kind of established himself as one of the best number twos, like you said, and... The, the Carabao Cup uh, penalty shootout, um, the Leicester penalty shootout. You know, there's been loads of games this season where he's come in and done a job and we love Alisson and we know how good he is. But the thing with Alisson is he does pick up little injuries every now and again where he can be out for two, three weeks. So, um, obviously, having a keeper as good as Kelleher to just come in is, is, is massive. But my only thing with Kelleher is he's going to get to a stage, in my opinion, that is probably going to be thinking right am i gonna have to, am i sticking around to be allison's number two forever or am i gonna actually go and play premier league first in football somewhere else because yep. he easily could right he easily could play <coughs> yeah. premier league uh football every every week no problem so i hope he's okay to stick around as the number two win some more domestic cups along the way and um yeah keep a hundred percent yeah, mate, same. Uh, Priya asked a great question. We're apparently looking for a third-choice goalkeeper. And this is why I love the chat, because Rohan, straight away, surely if Mr. Adrian... It looks like Adrian... Adrian gone, GK. Come on, for, for the media, for the, for, the, for the inside goss, 
you, you want a bit of cycling GK as a third choice. Look, I take him as a third choice. He's not he's not he's not over the hill, as people might say. Like this guy is a starting Premier League goalkeeper. He's still putting some great performances this season. Um, mm. I'd personally have him as a third choice keeper, to be honest. But yeah. um, I think oh, I assume we're in agreement that Adrian. I think it's already pretty much said that he's leaving. Thank God. <laughs> Look, to be fair, he's there for the vibes. He's got good he's vibes. He's there for the fair. vibes. He yeah. does. Have he's good a good vibes. lad like at heart, but his footballing ability doesn't match. Yeah, I'd, t- I'd take I'd take um Mr. Mr. Uh, not Adrian, Mr. Ben Foster any day of the week as a number three. Imagine that GoPro in front of the cop, man. Oh, can you imagine? That that would rattle some people though. Former United keeper. <laughs> it's former United keeper, isn't he? But um look, mm. like Ryan said, trying to see the content low. I want that backstage access to Mo Salah. So, I think uh, he, honestly, I think if he signed for a bigger club than Watford, he right, that GoPro is not coming out. <laughs> Put that away. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It is a I mean they're yeah. <laughs> He really documented them getting relegated. It's quite, <laughs> it's, quite, it's, quite, it's quite sad if you think about it. Like, he had his taste in the mic. Like, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> and he's still in like such a like good good spirits. Oh, like, absolutely. This, guy, this guy's just yeah, what a frigging legend. Like, just, what a man. What a man. I love the cycling GK. Look, you want personalities like that in football, so it is what it is. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, I mean. I'm just going to say Trent, Robbo, VVD, Canate, I assume Matip. Well, actually, we'll leave Matip. Uh, there might be something there. Um, Simicass, I think they're all stayers, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Simicass, again, similar to Kelleher, really, mate. He's Last season, he, he had a couple games, but... There was always this thing about him being in the basement, wasn't there, and not really being used ever. Like even when Robertson was just done, like Simicas still wasn't being used. So this season is coming. Even at the start of the season when Robertson picked up that little injury, um, you know he came in. He did. He did a really good job. And now there's people debating whether Robertson or Simicas. Look, Robertson's always going to be the number one in my opinion. I know he's gone off a bit of form towards the end of the season, but when you play as much football as he did, that's natural. So. Again, just to have somebody to keep him on his toes, finally, because he, he hasn't had that for a long time. Yeah. So I, I I do love Kostas, and he's the the scouse of the Greek now. So you know he, he absolutely loves it, <laughs> and um, I love that. You know when players come and they just like they adopt yeah. to the culture, and uh, yeah, I love him. Mate, he's breath of fresh air, Kostas. Mm. I mean, like that. He's a cult hero already with the penalty shootout. But oh, mate, yeah. he, he's he's got so much to offer as well. Like it's it's just. It's perfect. Like we struggled to find a left back, a good, mm. reliable left back for so long, and then like London buses to come along at once. And exactly. so, uh, yeah. But Andy Robertson for me, he's best left back in the world. Always will be the best left back in the world for however long he keeps up his form. Uh, look, every footballer has their off days. He didn't have the best Champions League final, but look, we probably wouldn't be in the Champions League final if we didn't have Andy Robertson. So, right. um. <laughs> Ah, uh, centre, centre halves. All right, Joel Matip, I think, is a definite stay. But do you think maybe there might be some room? To... This was his first fully fit season. Yeah. Like for me, the most he's he... played, isn't it, since he's been here? Yeah, by a long way he... as well. Yeah, I think I think he's stay. Like like it's not a debate really, but like we're trying to yeah. guys, we're trying to entertain you. Um, yeah, so... we can't just say everyone. Yeah. <laughs> um. So it will get I think, interesting. Yeah, I think I think we'll just say Matip stay. I I think in the back line, the key talking point is who yeah. is Trent's backup. You've got oh, Neko Williams right. coming back. Um, we think. Um, is ah, Neko coming back though? Is Neko coming uh, back, or well, Fulham going to sign him? Well, no, that's the thing. Like he's technically our player again. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but. Yeah, I think I think he's full and bound, especially like Rohan says, especially with um um Ramsey. Ramsey coming in. I think that's Can I just, just tell waiting. a quick story about Ramsey? Yeah, go on. Real quick. You you will hate me for this. But me, Ohms and Grizz have a group chat. And do you know where this is going? Yeah, I know where it's going. 
<laughs> so Grizz said that uh, we're close to signing Ramsey and Ohms got really gassed because he thought it was um, Ramsey from Aston Villa, Jacob. And Ohms is a, is a big advocate of Jacob Ramsey. And Ohms was so excited and Grizz was like, no, it's the right back, mate. <laughs> mate, I was, <laughs> I, I saw Rams, I, I think I woke, just woke up or just seen my phone. So I'm not, I've seen nothing about uh, Calvin Ramsey or like any of the rumours. So I was like, Ramsey? Like, d- like I've seen like little links to um, Jacob Ramsey, but nothing like, and then Grizz goes, yeah, we're getting Ramsey. I was, I was like, what? <laughs> like, what <a> signing? <laughs> this guy's like, he's 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 one of the best young English players. And then I go, I go on Twitter, I see his Calvin Ramsey. I come back, I just, oh man, it was, it was one of the worst moments of my year. <laughs> so um, yeah, look, we we all we all get excited, but Calvin Ramsey apparently he's a baller. Um, I'm not gonna act like I know anything about him, but uh, look, uh, before we address anything else. Here we go, our number one hater, Mr. Arjun Honore. I love the haters. I love the haters because people like you, you keep the chat fun. Ilyas, he's... <laughs> no public comments. Arjun, if you're going to come with the heat, you better expect it back. He's a Chelsea fan, uh, so I don't know what Chelsea fans are doing when they held two final L's to us. Uh, my mate, he went to both games. He came. He came on the channel twice. Once before the Carabao Cup final, once before the FA Cup final, and what happened? So I was see me, see me, see me, yeah, the Simicas. So mate, uh, hopefully your team finish top four next year, but I haven't predicted them to. So that's a combo Ooh. for another time. I haven't, I haven't. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert for Premier League prediction show probably like in two months time. Yeah, man. Yeah, man, you can hold that. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, brush United brush big up, guys. Big up, man. Um, we should pick up Ramsey for less than we sell Neko. Yeah, we'll sell Neko probably for about I reckon 10 to 15 million. Let Julian Ward get get into some, I don't know what they do backstage. I'm gonna miss Michael but... Edwards though. Like, is it... Julian Ward masterclass doesn't have the same ring to it, you know what I mean? Like, it's Michael true, yeah. Edwards masterclass it is, is true. like the yeah. There's that picture of Michael Edwards at his desk as well, and you're just like, wow, <laughs> this man has definitely done some hard negotiation. So mm. let, let him live his life. I don't know, whatever. Um, but yeah, it's the I think uh Kevin Ramsey, uh Joe Gomez. Look, it looks like he's signing a new contract. I am personally buzzing about that. Uh mate, do you think do you think uh what do you think on that essentially? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Joe Gomez. Always have been. Um I think He's bounced back from his injuries. He's had a few for us now, a few big ones. Every time he's come back. Uh, this season, he's played a few games at right back as well, which was interesting. He did really well there. Um, remember against Forest and a few of the other cup games. He did really well. Um, but yeah, no, he's a good one to have around because he can play centre-back. He can play right back. Um, he's still young. What is he? still only 24, right? I think he's still reasonably he's, young. Yeah, he's very young. Like whatever yeah, he is, so, he's, all I know, he's a very young man. So, for me, mate, it's similar to Simicast, really, uh, not Simicast, to what I said about Kelleher. Um, there's been rumours that you know Villa might want him, or and Villa are they're on a madness right now. I don't think they'll sign him because they've got Carlos now, and I see he's on a lot of money. But um, look, if Gomez. Because now he's behind the three, right? So if we've got Virgil Matip, you'd say Canate is above Gomez. Like, come on, yeah. like based on Canate's season now. Um, so again, it all comes down to if they're happy to sit around getting paid to not really play or if they actually want to go and play football. Because if Gomez wanted to, again, he could play for a Tottenham, he could play for a West yeah. Ham, a Leicester. He could he could easily play for those teams first. Just He wouldn't go there, but it'd be unreal for United. Like, look at the clowns they've got. You know what I mean? No, so, no. But it's unreal. I love him. I really like Joe Gomez. And yeah, if he just sign a new deal, I'd be delighted. I still think he's got... Like, we made a mistake before the 2021 season when we mm. had four centre-backs. We... We thought going into it with three. Look, it was a freak year in terms of injuries, but like I feel so much comfortable having four people that can play centre back and four top quality centre backs. Like, come on, Van Dyke, Matic, Canate, Gomez. Like, you've got baby, you like you've got baby Van Dyke and Canate, and you've got like massive and baby massive in Gomez. It's perfect. It's just it's it's harmony. Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I'm keeping Joe Gomez. I think he'll stay. Uh, 
Good right back option as well. Very underrated at right back, I think, this season. Done a massive shift for us. So, uh, yeah, Joe Gomez staying. Back line, I reckon we stay fairly settled. Uh, probably get Calvin Ramsey in there. And then, uh, I mean, the youngsters wise, you've got you've got the likes of Cometio, Reese Williams, Nat Phillips. Um, <coughs> I think Nat Phillips, I think, do you reckon Bournemouth? Back to Bournemouth. Yeah. Yeah, um, look, again, I keep, I'm a parrot, I keep repeating myself. It's just the thing with first-team football. Um, I think what Nat did with us last season was unreal. And mm. obviously, he's gone to Bournemouth. They've got promoted now. I think he played a lot of games for them. I think he was starting regularly. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it makes sense for Bournemouth to go and sign him. He's not going to get a sniffer as um, not really got any chance unless, touch wood, there's another massive crisis but I think that's something we won't see again to be honest because it was just ridiculous so Nat Phillips I love him but again like you said is a bit of a court hero um, for what he did last season and uh, yeah if he does leave and go to Bournemouth I wish him all the best yeah me too man like he deserves to play Premier League football to be honest I think he's a Premier League centre back he got us Champions League football uh, and so did Reese Williams Mr Reese Williams like just there lurking I don't, like he was at Swansea he came back uh, I don't really know what he's been playing under 23s uh, but he's too good for under 23s he's had that taste of Premier League football uh, but I reckon I reckon we probably do sell him or at least he does mm. go on loan he can't he can't stay and just do another year in the 23s like it's he needs he needs he needs game time he needs actual like real man on man game time like 11 aside league Saturday football game time not Sunday mornings like against Derby under 23 so um, yeah I think I think uh, I mean I, I'll probably be able to speak for the both of us here that Reese Williams will probably go on loan or we'll sell him I don't know how much yeah. we get for him maybe like 5-10 mil maybe if we sold him because I reckon I about that, bro. I reckon More about five, 5 I reckon yeah. 5 yeah yeah tends to stretch but look it's a Julian Ward era, guys. So you never know what's gonna happen. You never know what's gonna happen. Um, who else? Who else? Oh, I mean, we've got oh, we've got like oh, we've got all those left backs. Like Owen Beck, he's good. Connor loan. Bradley, yeah. Owen Beck loan. Connor Bradley loan. Loan. Loan slash sell. I don't know. Like, well, it's is a Cometio loan. Cometio loan. Van der Berg. Van den Berg. Oh yeah. So this he's guy, supposedly been good at Preston, you know. He said he wants to fight for a first team place. So that's crazy. Look, if this guy has that attitude, I'm all for it. To be honest, I want I want people, I want youngsters wanting to get into the first team. If he turns out to be an absolute gem, bring it on. He can play right back. He can play centre back. Maybe he's our fifth centre back option. Maybe we go into crisis. But I reckon we loan him, maybe to a championship side that are probably going to compete. Like a, I don't know, maybe like a, oh. God. Burnley, you just don't want to send anyone to Burnley. Like, it's, but maybe like a, I don't know, who, who's in the championship? That's that's probably going to be good. Watford, maybe. Um, Norwich, maybe. Uh, him and Kabak doing it for the Reds. Oh, but, uh, yeah. Um, ben Davies, focal point is... Who? That's Spurs. Does he want about... us to sign... Ben, our Ben Davies. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, I said who was a joke, but you genuinely forgot him. You forgot Mate, his existence. I that completely crazy. forgot. <laughs> that guy, bro. We still don't know if he's a real guy. Can anyone Not confirm real. if Ben Davies exists? He played. He played when, ten minutes. Did anybody see the... Ben Davies in real life? That's actually true. He he's a f- fragment of our imagination. He's he's a he, he's he's just a symbol. He's just like you know people have like symbols in life. He's like a thing that came into all of our heads that was just symbolic of that that weird era where we had no one at the, at the back. But um, yeah, like Prius uh, Prius says, Beck was promising. I really like Beck. I think he's, he's yeah, got so much he's good. <laughs> he's got so much drive. He's got so much heart. Um, so yeah, no, this 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 guy's a good guy. Um, I I, I I've got time for him. Um. Yeah, Zlatan. Not to be confused. Oh, Z- yeah, to be confused with Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Um, 
Thanos has snapped him out of the club. Yeah, most likely. Um, oh, he's 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 not trolling for once. Normal question. Wow. Oh, we'll all. get <laughs> who are your realistic additions and who are your dream additions. Right, we'll get onto that at the end of the show. So you guys are gonna have to wait because um, me and Ben need to rattle through the squad because there's some interesting people to talk about, like Nabi Kesa. Like keep 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 keep. Um, Tyler Morton. Oh, mate, we've got so many players like Leighton Clark. Yeah, we've got loads. We've got so many players. Damn, damn. Let's get into it. Midfield, Fabinho staying. Mm-hmm. Can you come on, man? Arjun, if you if you if you um miss it, you can always watch it back. So it'll probably be in the last five, ten minutes of the show. I can't give you a time estimate because the chat, the chat, the chat carries the conversation. Like we are, we are, we are, we are, we are you people, like Faz, Zlatan, Priya, Ali, Focal Point. We are you. You are us. Like mm-hmm. so well, whatever happens, happens essentially. Um, but yeah, Fabinho, Tiago, Hendo, I imagine staying unless Hendo has another contract issue and, he, and PSG want to sign him again um, who else alright I reckon there's talking points about everyone else other than them three agreed in terms of different conversation I reckon should we start with who's likely to be gone from midfield Ox yeah 100% took the words right out of my mouth yeah so yeah Faz um, I mean I love Ox like this guy as a person, he's brilliant, yeah. Yeah. He's just... He got really unlucky with that injury. Like, what can we do? Um, he People forget, in the season we won the league, he played 30 games in that season, actually contributed well to the league title. People think after his injury, he never came back. But he, he's come back and he's had some good performances. Uh, like, even this season, like, Leicester in the Cup, Atletico at home. Um, like, even during the AFCON period. Scored a couple goals there, so mm. look, it's not all doom and gloom with Ox. He's he's done well. He's won a lot with us, um, but yeah, I reckon he's he's in a he's in a similar situation to the likes of like I guess like Lingard, Deli Ali, where like these guys were all the England squad, and now they've just been replaced because they got minutes. Um, <coughs> so yeah, um, right, Ali. Talks about keep Millie. I think we probably want to keep him, but I don't know. The thing is, think... right, with Millie, if he was leaving, I'm pretty sure the club would have done something for him on the last of the season. Yeah, that's true. And there wasn't anything. There's been nothing about him even looking like leaving on social media. Um so I think he's I think he's gonna sign like a one year deal and then I don't know. But if not, like, it'll be a bit sad because we've not had a chance to say goodbye. We yeah. did the Divock. We have to manage at the parade. But Milner, we, if they just tell us now, like, okay, Milner's going. Like, as much as people will say Milner's not good and Milner's, you know, never good enough to start, whatever. I don't care. I think Milner's been a brilliant servant. He's an amazing character to have in the dressing room. All of the players, the managers uh, will all tell you that. And you know, you need to have a player like James Milner to be successful, in my opinion. So, I would give him a new deal. Limit his play time so he's not playing much. Cups, all of those kind of things, potentially. But I, I just think having him around the boys, especially yeah. the young boys like Harvey Elliott and Curtis Jones, I think would be massive. Mate, it works wonders. I think I think they go ahead of him in the pecking order. That's how I'd see it. But you, I'd keep him just around. Mm. He can be like a seventh slash eighth midfield option. Like you you've got people like Tiago, Hendo, they pick up niggles. So when the likes of well, this is my this is my hope, the likes of Jones and Elliot step up next season a lot, then you might have Milner as like your fifth, sixth choice midfielder. And you, you might have to have him in the cups. And look, he's he's never let us down in the cups. He was yeah. unbelievable in the FA Cup final, I thought. So look he he he's still got some use. Like he's not he's obviously not the most talented of our midfielders, but he like like I like I always say, footballers can go on till forty now, and there's no one fitter than him. He drinks Ribena, <laughs> so he's he's um yeah he's staying. Guys, forty of you, smash the like button. I don't know how many likes we're on. 
But I'll please give a quick little check for you, Broski. Guys, if we're not at 200 likes right now, it's going to be a problem. We are on 34, so not 30, bad, but not we bad. can do better. I'll get, get... Right, there we go, 35. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> yeah, let's get to 50 in the next 10 minutes. Guys, if 15 of you watching, I know I know that 15 out of 40 of you right now have not clicked the like button, you definitely should. I don't know why, but you should. So, moving on, Ben. Um, Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott. I'm going to group them together. How do you deal with these two? Loans? Sell? Keep? Um, It's tough because I think most of the time when Klopp has a young player, I know Harvey went out to Blackburn, um, which was you know incredible for him. I think that made him that go from a boy to a man kind of thing. Um, but most of the time, Klopp usually tends to keep his young talents around him. Um, and he won't, like, you know, the ones that he sees potential in will stay. So, I don't know, man. I feel like Harvey, before his injury, was unbelievable. Like, I went to a few games where Harvey literally ran the show. Like, the Burnley one in particular was, he was ridiculous in that game. Um, pre-season as well, like, I just remember coming back from Anfield, that Bill Bow game where he skinned the defender and then hit the bar. Hit the ball, yeah. I was just thinking, this guy, is, he's got it. Uh, but obviously, after his injury, it's, it's obviously no surprise that he's struggled to get minutes. Um, I don't necessarily think he's regressed or anything. Like, some people go on like he's lost his potential and I, I just think that's silly like one minute we're saying he's the is our one is our star boy the next minute oh I'll loan him out he, he's not you know it's like what is it but for me i would keep harvey again the cup games i think are going to be crucial and you know what we we need to consider as well in this video so we've got five subs next season haven't we yeah so yep. players like harvey elliott and curtis jones they're gonna they're gonna get minutes like if we're two in a looping games if we're cruising at home they can come on for the last 20 25 minutes you know, show what they've got and then fight for a spot in the team. But Curtis Jones, um, again, I don't see the the hate around him, to be honest. I don't know what your feeling is, but I feel like with him, and I know this is a cliche thing to say, and a lot of people have said it, but I am going to say it. People see a scouser, they see a midfielder. What do they want? They, they expect him to be Stevie G, right? Yeah. And he's not going to be that. He's never going to be Stevie G level. He's never going to be... Even close to that level, like we know what Curtis Jones is. He's a very good young player who's going to have a, a solid Premier League career. No one's pretending he's going to be the best midfielder in the world. I mean, who knows? He, some things, mad things happen in football, right? He could just go and burst out to be that. But I just don't get it. And I've never seen in 24 years of my life young players get so much slander. It's ridiculous. Like a player comes in, they play two seasons, they have a bad performance. And it's not just Liverpool, it's everywhere as well. It happens to Phil Foden, it happens to Rhys James, it happens all over the, the place. As soon as a young player drops a stinker, that's it. They're not a good, the, the hype's gone. So for me, uh, Curtis Jones, I like him. I think he, he does offer something to our team. Again, he's got to step up next season because he has had some poor games this year. That's no secret. But um, I really like him. I, I like the player. Um, and yeah, I think he, he could be a good asset, especially in the Cups and like I said, the five subs. So. Mate, that that five subs point is bang on. And the thing mm. is, like Curtis Jones, he's he's twenty one years old. I think people sometimes forget because he's been around for so long that he's like twenty three, twenty four. He's twenty one years old. Do you know how young that is? Like that's younger than that's younger than me and Ben, and me and Ben are young. So, um, like, I think with Curtis Jones. It's it's he gets scapegoated at times, and you yeah, I know you were at the Southampton game. Our midfield was Milner, Jones, Elliot. Jones and Elliot hadn't played for a long time or hadn't started a game for a long time. They stepped onto that pitch and ran the midfield against away him. as well. Away, away, away against a very good Premier League midfield in um is it yeah. Diallo and um Ward Prowse? And they went mm -hmm. onto that pitch and absolutely bossed it. I'm not loaning Jones. I'm not loaning Elliot. I'm not selling either of them. I'm keeping them. And I'm saying, you boys, you're going to get your minutes. You're going to get your chances. I I think Klopp has full trust in them. Yeah. I think it was very wise to take them out at the crunch end of the season. It's not because he doesn't rate them. You know he rates them. But well, do you, you see last season, mate, just, just to jump in, sorry, when Harvey got injured, I think Klopp's reaction 
says it all. Like I've never yeah. there's two times where I've seen Klopp in that way, and obviously the first one is understandable because it was his his mother bless him. But the second one was when Harvey was injured. The guy could barely speak. He was yeah, in tears. Um and he literally couldn't answer the questions properly. He said, We're gonna wait for Harvey, we'll be here for him. And this guy loves him, and there was a comparison before it started the season with uh, Goethe, Klopp and Goethe when Goethe yeah. was coming through. So maybe we'll see. I think they've got massive future. So I think Harvey Elliott will potentially have a bigger career. Yeah, but me too. I, I think Curtis Jones, man, like I think at the very least he'll be a solid, a very good Premier League player. I still think that guy can explode. He has the attributes. Like he's so, oh, I don't know how to explain it. Like you just you can rely on them players on the ball. Yeah, you can rely on them. Like they they they're nineteen and twenty one. And you feed them the ball like Jones up against them, um, up against um, uh, Arsenal in the League Cup semi final. Absolutely took the mick out of them um, Arsenal's midfield. So um, look, I think I think he needs to he needs to um, he. I think they both need to stay. I think they'll get a lot of meal minutes, especially the five subs. Um, they'll get starts. Look, our midfield probably none of our midfield are really reliable to rely on for a whole season in terms of injuries so everyone's going to get a chance people have got a chance and Klopp ain't afraid to throw people in so uh <coughs> quick super chat um 975 jam rock thank you so much man really Big appreciate up, man. it um like it says loan jones to villa to be tutored by stevie and Coop. <coughs> if we do loan jones are we happy in the sense that he'll he'll get guaranteed pre league minutes and we haven't lost him but I'd still keep him. I I mm. I I'd I'd love him at maybe maybe we get Jacob Ramsey in like a sort of deal with Curtis Jones, but Ooh. um and he goes to and I'd be happy with him under Stevie and Coutinho because he's probably a he's not on their level, but he's probably a as a player a bit of a hybrid between the both of them. So um yeah, it's also what we do with Fabio Carvalho as well, man. Like where do we play him? Do we play him in midfield, do we play him up front? Like we've got, we've got a lot of players. People forget we have a lot of players, and we have yeah. a lot of promising youngsters as well. Like we have the likes of Tyler Mawson, who I think will go on loan. Um, the likes of uh, Leighton Clarkson, who was on loan. Like these players, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not rubbish. They're not. I think we forget sometimes that we have the likes of Fabinho, Thiago, Henderson, Cater. Like these guys, even though they have their haters. These are players at the top of the game, and True. you can't you can't expect you can't expect eighteen nineteen year olds from the academy to do what Trent does. And then when you get the likes like Jones and Elliot, I think like to have that sort of young core, you need to keep it. Like these like Jones and Elliot were always the two standout players in that youth team. So yeah. I, I I I I've got plenty of time for them, and I think I think like you said with the five subs, of it's. It's gonna be um uh I, I'd keep them essentially. Um can I Timmy... just touch on that Nabby thing just real quick, the fifty mil? Uh, yeah, go on. Fake fake news. Fake news. It's been confirmed to um TAT. They, they didn't even bother tweeting it out. Um a reliable journalist replied uh saying that Nabi that whole thing, Nabi to PSG fifty million is a load of nonsense. So Hold that Nabi haters, and I see somebody in the in the in the comments. I see you, Nabi. Bye bye. He's not going anywhere. In fact, he's signing a new deal. So all of you Liverpool fans that slander my boy, my Guinean king, hold it because he's not going anywhere. He's he's our second best midfielder. I will say it with chest. Thiago's the only one better than him. If you disagree, comment. Tell me. Like you know, Nabi gets so much stick. I'm sorry, mate. I had to go on a tangent here because no, it's people fine, just. Honestly, like I've become the guy that just loves this. And you know what? I have like I don't even care. Like when people talk about me, they say, "Oh, Nabi, Nabi." Like I've never seen a good a midfielder in our squad get as so much stick as him. It's unbelievable. And yes, he's had games where he's let us down in you know in sometimes this season. But like, yeah, he does need to work on his shooting. But come on, like, did anyone really expect him to score from that? Even if he connected with it well, like. That was that was the thing that ticks me off the most, mate. To be fair, he came on for twenty minutes in the Champions League final. 
He takes a bad shot and everyone's laughing and moaning at Kaya. It's like, we were literally chasing the game when he came on. How is that his fault? You know what I mean? So he's getting a new deal. He's been brilliant with his injuries this season. And when he's played on the pitch, he's he's shown us how good he is. And if you disagree with that, then hey, yo, I've got some glasses for you. You can you can have them if you want. But yeah, it's mad. <laughs> it's absolutely mad. He's he's a he's a he's a quality player. You want come on guys, like let's be real. You want you don't want to sell players that are of that quality, even if like they're your like sixth choice midfielder, which he's not. But like, say you had like three Navi cases. And one of them was your sixth choice. You'd rather have that strength in depth. It doesn't matter about if they get game time. Okay, it doesn't matter. Like as a fan, I want as many good players at my club as possible. Naby Case mm-hmm. is a great player. Um, Ali says, "Yeah, look, he needs to work on his shooting, though." Yeah. Um, but like, look, he's he's been. Um, I think I think we can see when he plays the impact he has. Like in the press, he's very underrated in the press. Um. I don't know. I, I I think it's um it's 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 like Marmite with Naby Keita. You either love him or you hate him. So uh but I don't think it should be like that. I personally don't I, I'm not personally like I'm not I'm not Ben, I'm not like Naby Keita's biggest like like defender. I'm not his biggest hater. Like, I think he's a great player. Yeah, he has stuff to work on, but if you can't see what he brings to this team, then then that's that's on you, I guess. Um, so yeah, Nabi, I've, I mean, we were gonna get onto him, but we've spoken. About <laughs> I'm him. sorry, I'm sorry. No, I'm no, sorry. mate, mate, you've you've literally just you've you've let the combo flow, and that's what we want. Thank you, chat. Thank you, chat. You're aware. Big up the you chat, make, man. Big up the chat. Um, midfield, right? So we're keeping Cater. We're keeping Milner. We might be loaning Curtis Jones. Or, but I'm keeping Jones and Elliot. One of them at the absolute max, isn't it? Like, yeah. you can't do both. We're selling James Milner. Thiago Hendo, Fab are staying. Ox is gone. Tyler Morton, I'd send him on loan to be honest. Mm. I'd, I'd sell. I'd sell Morton on loan. I'd sell Morton on loan. Come on, mate. <laughs> what am I saying? Sell Morton on loan. Um, Leighton Clarkson. There was loads of hype about this guy in preseason. Yeah. This always the thing, isn't it? Like it's just always that that young player that there's all of a sudden so much hype about. Uh, I'll just loan him. I mean, like you might get a good season out of him in a championship. He might look. He might turn into a world beater. You never know, guys. But the odds would. I think suggest... there's more chance of me getting my uh, Twitter account back. <laughs> fair, fair. Um, yeah, so loan. Look, he might raise his value by a few mil, and we can use that few mil to give Mo Salah the few mil that he requires. Uh, midfield's done. All right. All right. We're moving on. Oh, yeah, it is done. It is. I was just trying to think if there's anyone we're missing, but I don't think there is. Um, what other youngsters are in midfield? <sighs> I think that's it. Yeah. All right, let's go into the forward line. This will be more juicy. Mm, Salio Mane, I think, are we considering him sold? Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. I, I think it's 99% done. Sadly, yeah. people, I think. Say your bias to Sadio. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much he's appreciated. But I think if well, he's made his mind you should up, say that. Because I feel I, like some fans don't appreciate him, but I'll get on to that when you finished. No, mate, go ahead. Yeah, um, you, you you say about appreciating, bro. Like, honestly, some the way some people have spoken about Sadio in the last year, year and a half, and now all of a sudden because he's leaving, oh yeah, we we don't want him to go. We want him to sign a new deal, and it's like, you, I, I don't want to call people out, but it's like it's it's just pathetic, really. Like, you literally, as soon as he he went on a bad form of patch, you turned on him and a lot of fans, and not everyone, because there are people like me and Ohms that have stood by this guy for so long, since the day he came in to the day he leaves, really. But some of you are like, oh, if we, we need to sell him in the summer. He's finished. He's not the player anymore. Uh, reinvest. We need to rejig the front three. Look, even this season, he's come in. There's been games on the wing where he has been stinky and he did go on a goal drought at one point, but... When we put him up front, and I think this is the key, this is the the thing that kind of 
made all these people question themselves. He's been a different player, mate. And I made a comp um, on my own Twitter account, rest in peace. But um, it was Sadio Mane, every goal this season. Um, and uh, it's been a long day. And it, it, it was making me cry making it. But my point is, when I made that comp, right, and this is why I'm so concerned about replacing Sadio, you see every goal Mane scored. And he scored every type of goal you can think of. Headers, volleys, yeah. goals where he's gone on solo runs, goals where he's come from the left, goals where he's played as the number nine. He's done everything. And those players don't come around very often that can do it all. Um, and look, there are a few names which we'll get into once we've dis discussed who, who would let go of. But Manny is not as easy to replace as people make out. And I know we've got Luis Diaz, who I absolutely adore. I think he's absolutely sensational. But... <sighs> At the end of the day, Mane got 23 goals. I'm going to have to replace those 23 goals. So unless Luis Diaz fixes up his finishing, which is the only thing I believe that lets him down, which hopefully he'll sort out. Um, I'm, I'm quite concerned, I can't lie, because the names I'm seeing, none of them are on Mane's level, bro. None of them. So I love the guy. You know, the parade, I watched it on YouTube because yeah. I was doing the, uh, the quotes for TAT, the player quotes and the manager quotes. And... When I seen Mane and he was just doing all this, like pumping his chest yeah. and blowing kisses and stuff, oh, I was like, "Oh man, don't, it, Sadio, man. don't do this, man." <coughs> Mate, yeah. he's gonna be, he's gonna Sad be a day. massive miss. It's like it's that whole money ball thing. You can't, but if football isn't money ball, you can't replace someone in the aggregate. You can't, you can't, you can't buy two or three pieces to replace a special player like that. Sometimes you yeah. need to replace a special player with a special player, um, which is why for me. The one person I really want, which is so unrealistic, but I'd love to get. And chat, Kunku. let me know what you think. But Harry Kane. Harry Kane. Oh, I thought going to say Kunku. Harry Kane. Harry Kane. In, it would never happen in a million years. But there are rumblings. And, you know, stranger things have happened. Um, I'm glad they got top four now. Because if they didn't... Well, we were in for Son. If they didn't yeah, get top Yeah, we were going to bid for Son, yeah. So, like, the, the ambition is there, which is good. But K, we do we change the way we play? Do we change the way we play? Do we now play with an out and out nine? Because we haven't. Do we play? Do we spend big money on the likes of Kane or Darwin Nunes or um, uh, Robert Lewandowski? Maybe like it will go completely against our policy. Signing Kane would go against our policy. Let's be real. Um, but like, like yeah. You know, we went to United. Is Kane our RVP in that sense that he's the guy that spearheads us to a title? I don't know because, like, this guy, as much as he's a rival player, he's one of the best centre forwards in the world. He's what, and he's not just a striker. He's, you know, everyone knows what he's about. He can hold up that ball. He can pass that ball. So, I, 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 I'd, I'd take Kane in a heartbeat. It's never going to happen. Like we're dealing with Daniel Levy at the end of the day. But look, if I, if I had a blank check and I could convince anyone it'd be Kane. Uh, but look, it, <coughs> if we went for Lewandowski, it'd go against the policy, transfer policy. I love that. Lewis 34 and people might say, oh, he's 34. Strikers, give us two years. Just, yeah, give us two years, mate. Um, then the other one is Darwin Nunes. Now, I know there's a lot of slander about Nunes' hold-up play, whatever. But say we change our style. Say we play a system where Darwin Nunes doesn't have to be the centre forward that holds up the ball. He's deadly. He's lethal. We saw it against us. Virgil van Dijk yeah. has said he's one of the hardest strikers to play against in the world. I don't <laughs> he's care. scored like five goals. Bro. He's got, I don't care what I don't care what you say. What what the stats say? My eyes are telling me this is a classic eye test sort of argument. My eyes have looked at this guy play against us twice. He's absolutely electric, mm. and he scores goals. Mm. He seems the perfect player, and he's Uruguayan. Uruguayans tend to do well at this club. Unless your name mm -hmm. is Sebastian well, Cortes. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> and even he scored one of the greatest goals. Any oh, yeah. Players. Bicycle, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'd get... I'd, I'd really I'd really go big for a centre-forward. I think if yeah. I had to go for a forward, it'd be, a, it'd be a nine. It'd be a number nine. Cavani... This is a great shout. Cavani never had the best, like, hold-up play. But that guy is lethal. Absolutely. This, mate, this whole, like, uh, dribbling ability and... Oh, mate, it does my head in. It honestly does my head in. You look at the great number nines the Premier League have had over the years. 
There's been loads that don't just dribble past three or four players or make that crazy passes. Like you don't need to do that. If you're up front as a number nine, your job is to put the ball in the back of the net. Simple as that. And I agree with you. I think we've got um we've got Lewis in as managed replacement. I think some of the journalists tried to pretend that wasn't managed replacement. Yes, it was, because we were supposed to sign Diaz this summer. But because Spurs wanted him, we signed him in the winter. So Diaz is coming for money. Don't care what anyone tells me. And then I think we do sign, or I want to sign a number nine. And yeah. again, like you, I don't know why people are so upset with this Darren Nunes guy. I think the the most important thing is why people don't want him is because of the price tag, to be honest. I think it'd be quite expensive. And I think maybe if you're going to spend that much, you may as well go for Nkunku. That's yeah. the only thing I can think of. But look, if if we sign Darwin Nunes, I'd back it. If we sign Nkunku, I'd back it. I want to get your thought on something because I did see this circulated on Twitter yesterday. Ivan Tony, what are you saying? Would you do that or no? I don't know. He's obviously such a talented player. But look, it's so hard to tell because he's had one season in the Prem and yeah. like he's at Brentford. So it's hard to like judge how good he actually is. He's obviously a great striker and he scored about like 15 odd goals in the Prem, which is no mean feat. Especially as a at a club, and he 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 had that interview himself. Um, he, um, and I saw him. I went I went to the Liverpool Brentford game, and even at, at Anfield, and even though um, like they they weren't very good, like he's he's different to what we've had. He's an absolute threat in the air. We've seen it ourselves. He's an absolute threat in the air. Um, so yeah, I, I would I would, I mean. Look, I, we wouldn't get him as a sort of a Rigi replacement. Whoever, if we got him, he'd be in the mix to start most games. I reckon. Um, yeah, I think Zlatan. He's kind of hating on it, but that's fine. Uh, Priya wants wants him hundred percent. Look, is 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 Kane the four that we've been sort of rumored with? Disregarding how likely they are, a Kane. Lewandowski, Nunes, and um, Tony, and he'd probably be and we in Kunku to be fair, he'd probably be last on that list. But if we got him, I'd still be buzzing, mate. I still think not like buzzing like oh my god, like like I would be with Harry Kane, but I'd still be excited. Yeah. Um, but we've seen we've seen like when we've sort of moved away from that style, we sort of tried to sign a sort of bigger number nine, like we did with Benteke. It didn't really work out. And Benteke was unreal at Villa. Um, so ideally, I'd want to see him for another season so I can have a proper gauge on him. Like, I still think he could be an unreal player. Um, but if I had it my way, uh, Harry Kane's my number one. And Kunku probably mm. um, fits the mould best. And his numbers are ridiculous. Like 35 goals and like 25-ish assists. That's ridiculous. But for me, Kane, number one. Lewandowski is something different, but you know he's getting you goals. Um, and then I think Nunes, I love the idea of. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what the stats say. I don't care what people think about his dribbling. He's a decent dribbler. I, I see that comp going around. Like footballers have never dribbled the ball badly. Like it's they're footballers. He's he's twenty two years old. So I think he'd be a great signing for us. It is the price tag, but he's wanted by everyone. He's wanted by everyone for a reason. The people at the top football clubs, they're not silly. Unless they're the analysts at United, um, they're not silly. Um <laughs> So look, and then look, Mikhail, Mikhail come in with Carvalho straight away. I am so excited for Carvalho. Um, Me too. Like the way he linked up with Mitrovic, maybe, maybe we do. That's why we're getting the. I mean, people have been saying it. Maybe we get the big striker so we can have a sort of Carvalho Mitrovic vibe. Um, but I think he's got a massive part to play um, because I think Arigi goes. I reckon Minamino goes. Uh, yeah. well, actually, and... I'm not sure about Taki. I, I'd actually want Taki to stay. Yeah, the cups and stuff. He's been yeah. that's been his. He's been incredible. But like, he seems like he probably needs game time. He seems. Yeah. He, I reckon he'd be happy to stay. But I think origi has gone. You sort of the thing is every. You always say every good squad needs two quality players in each position. Now, mm. 
it's what you do with Diego Jota. Do you consider him a a nine or? I only there? ever want him to play up front, bro. I never want him to play on the wing. Yeah, I I yeah. think I think again, like Jota is still people are sleeping on Jota here because he dried up a bit. Yeah, but like this guy scored so many goals for us. Um, it's a period of time where he was our go-to like guy for goals. So yeah. Let's um let's let's remember that we're gonna have. I think we can we can happily say Diaz, Salah, uh, Jota staying. Um, Firmino, what Firmino will stay. I think. Well, Klopp Klopp said that every player that's leaving that that has contracts Knows. up next year, they know. I think Firmino will stay. I think Klopp mm. he's not someone to just write Firmino off after a few injuries and a. He's still come up with so many important goals this season. He has, Forget. and up until um, his injury, he was doing really well. I think maybe we might see a change in his role because we might see him slowly drop deeper. We might see a formation change. We might go to a four-two-three-one. All of a sudden, that position behind the striker, that's his position. Um, but yeah, there's still so much value in Firmino. So I think he's happy to stay as well. He doesn't seem like the type of guy at this stage of his career that's desperate to have to start every game, but he's happy at Liverpool. He's one of the He's one of, the, I reckon he's one of the fans' favorite players. Um, he's um, loved by the players themselves. So I think Firmino stays. I think that's four. It's the Mane situation. So you've got Salah, Diaz, Jossa, Firmino, Carvalho. If you consider him a forward, might be a midfielder. And then you want maybe a nine. I want a nine. I'd go Kane yeah. as, and then. But I doubt we get him. In Kunku, I'll be happy with. Nunes, I'll be so happy with. Um, but then, yeah, that leaves Taki. Um, he should get more minutes. And, like, the Leeds thing with, like, Jesse Marsh. Yeah, it's makes a big sense. link in there. But I think there is a bit of going to be a bit of a change of the guard in terms of style and how we play. Like, we always slowly evolve our style. So, I reckon we'll we'll be such a possession based team that we need someone in there against the low blocks that can sort of just mm-hmm. you know get in the mixer and bag like Jota did, but probably to another level if we really want to compete on like all four fronts again. So yeah, I I don't know what your thoughts are, mate. I went on a bit of a ramble there. Yeah, Shout- no, it's, yeah, it's calm, bro. Um, look, I. Carvalho, I was just because that's the one on the screen. Listen, I've again I watched a bit of Fulham when basically from January when it looked like we were going to sign him, um, and then um, we obviously didn't. We still get them. Nico, I was one hundred percent sure we'd sign Carvalho, and um, you know we did. And I've watched a lot of Fulham games since we were linked with him and. He's brilliant. He's absolutely sensational, this kid. He's going to the top, let me tell you that much. I think he's going to be more of an advanced player. I think a lot of people are... I don't know why they're saying that he might play centre mid. I didn't see him play there once, to be honest, when I watched Fulham. Uh, Obviously, we know Klopp. He he did that with Harvey Elliott, to be fair. He was a right winger and then he put him centre mid. So maybe it could happen, but I feel like this guy's more of a Coutinho. And I know that's like the most... Whenever we see creative player, we just say that, don't we? Yeah. It's more like a Coutinho. But, um, <laughs> he can play from the left. He can play from the middle. I think he's brilliant. And the rumours are and the reports are that he is going to be part of the, the first team and he's going to have an important role next season. So I'm here for it. And I'm very excited for pre-season now to, to see how he gets on because I feel like pre-season, for those kind of guys, it's always really fun to watch uh, how they get on. So I can't wait for Carvalho, to be honest. Taki... I'd keep him. Um, even that game again at Southampton that I went to, that finish yeah. was unreal. Unreal finish. Um, and that's what he can do. Like, okay, he's not the most flashiest player in the world. He's not going to get the ball and dribble past five players. He's not going to do crazy things. But what he does do is he scores goals. And again, I said it before, the cups. Um, when you play those lower lower sides, Taki is very, very handy. Um, so I would keep him. Divock, obviously, we know he's gone. Bless him. Glad we managed to give him the send off he deserved. On, um, I mean, that sounds like he's dead, doesn't it? When I say that, but, uh, <laughs> it does, to be honest, mate. We, <laughs> he's not. It feels like he's dead because he, he's ours. There's no one else. Is like, yeah. how can Divock Origi play for another club? Like, yeah, 
he's one of them as well where, again, I have to hold my hands up with Divock because there's been plenty of times where I've not rated him and been very frustrated with him and said that we need to sell him. Um, but this guy, he always comes back and has the last laugh. And I will miss him. I will miss Divock. Just say, just that saying when you when a game's not going your way and you just say, oh, I'll just throw Divock on, see, see what happens. You won't be able to say it anymore. So I'm Champions sad. League final felt like that, didn't it? Yeah, exactly. I was that, gutted mate. he wasn't on the bench. I was like, yeah. this is Divock o'clock. Good like point. you get him in that box, yeah, he might win a header, he might score. Like it's just, it's just what he's done, and he's gonna be a big miss. Like it's, it shouldn't. It, you and people are, oh, you need a Divock replacement. How can you replace something like you that? Can't. How can you? How you can't? It's impossible to re- say, oh yeah, that guy's gonna be our guy who's gonna turn up in the big occasion. We're gonna need someone else to do that. Maybe it's the likes of Firmino who turns into that sort of player because Firmino he has come on and scored some important goals, Arsenal away, Inter Milan away, so. Uh yeah. Uh Anissa says the final actually needed an Origi moment. I absolutely agree. So clutch, but uh look, we might have someone else that steps up. Taki might be that player. I don't know. He's not obviously that sort of player, that sort of presence, which is why I kind of like that. Because everyone, every all of our forwards are very similar. Yeah. Um and Origi was different. So look, maybe Tony is that kind of player. He might not start every game, but um yeah, I don't think we're going to do a lot in the transfer window, but I think we will. That was my man. No worries. Um, I don't know. It's so hard to know what we're going to do. We're definitely in the market for a forward with Mane going. 100. <coughs> I don't think we get a midfielder, you know. You don't. And, and people are going to be mad. People are going to lose their heads. I know what you're going to say. I t- Did you see my tweet yesterday? No, what was it? Are you alluding to a, a signing for next summer? Uh, Bellingham. Yeah, I'll let you finish then. Yeah, I think I think if we are waiting for someone, like we, Klopp has waited for players, Van Dijk, these sort of players. Dows, what a shout. It's, Patrick Schick. This guy... Mm. He's injury prone, I think. That's the problem. But he scores so he scored so many goals. Oh, that because... goal at the World Cup, Euros, whatever the, it was against, yeah. against Scotland. Yeah, yeah, Euros. Yeah, this is a great shout. But he'd want to start. That's the thing. I don't think he start. He could start. And you know what? Perfect, perfect. I reckon he's a he's one that we could potentially get because he won't start every game, but he will start some games. Like and. Yeah, he's got that presence about him in the box. He's got that sort of like you can send the ball into the box. He might get a toe, might come off his, I don't know, just hit his forehead and go in. He's that sort of player. So look, that was that's a great shout. Um, but yeah, it depends what we do. Like we still got our Diaz and Salah are going to be the two guys on the wing. Right, what do we do up front? We have Jota there. People, let's not sleep on Diogo Jota, please. He's Let's better than not... Figo, guys. He's better than Figo. He is better than Figo. Uh, and he wears the number 20. Mm. And his name is Diego. Uh, but, yeah, we do need a nine. And Barry Kane, that's my man. Um, fun fact. I'm in the mud if we sign yeah. Harry Kane. Oh, I, I am well and truly in the mud. Because <laughs> I don't like the guy. I do not like the guy whatsoever. But... I did a little chat with my brother and I said, it's not going to happen. Like you said, it's never going to happen. So I don't even know why yeah. we we talk about this, but if we did sign Harry Kane, I'd have to put my agenda to one side and get behind him because he is an incredible player, but he just is like, no matter how much I don't like him, he, he's, he's ridiculous at football, but there's one of my mates who's a proper Harry Kane fan boy. Uh, he won't be watching this, but I like to go in on him to wind him up a bit, but there's no doubt his, his quality and his ability. But His quality. He, there's a reason. He's been so sought after. And look, mate, Harry, if you want to win trophies, if you don't want to be the next Alan Shearer, um, well, you probably you wouldn't mind being Shearer. But in terms of trophies, if you want to, if you want to, you know, get a few trophies here and there, come to the Reds. We'll treat you well. We'll sing your name. We'll, we'll, we'll have multiple songs instead of having come on, you Spurs belted around the Tottenham, the Tottenham Hotspur Arena. So. Um, uh... Okay. Um, yeah, I have a soft spot for him. Me, me and Harry were born in the same hospital, which is a fun fact. Um, so 
I feel like me and him have a bit of a bond. <laughs> Even though it was like ten years later, or whatever. yeah, yeah, but still, there's something in there. He, it was either me or him, <laughs> in terms of becoming the footballer. And I let him have the, let him have the shine. I will stick to Chris Khan TV, doing the, <laughs> doing, doing the hustle on Chris Khan. He TV. don't know none your business, does he? he so don't, the jokes he don't know him. none. He don't know Dow. He don't know the great people in chat. Um, but yeah, uh, before we talk a bit about. I know Audra wanted to talk about dream window, realistic window. So actually, that's a good point because we were actually planning to do that. Um, mm-hmm. K Gordon. Learn. Actually, Learn. he's still very young. So I don't know if a loan would benefit him right now. Maybe under 23s is still the way yeah. to go for him. Give him a year in the under twenty three. He's him play yeah. youth league, UEFA youth league. I mean, what's his name? Mushalowski. What's happened to him, mate? I was hearing he was like the next, the Polish Messi. I mean, our fans are so shameless, aren't they? Like any young kid we get through, oh, the, the the Polish Messi, or when Mar- <laughs> remember when we saw Markovic, the Serbian Messi, and we, we just have no shame, and they keep doing it. And <laughs> we had so I heard many. so much stuff about this Mushalowski. <laughs> And he just never gets picked. When there's games where youth players come in, I haven't seen Mosolovsky, so I don't know what to say. I don't know if he's good. I don't know if he's crap. Maybe loan him out. I don't know. Ever since I was like a young boy, there's always been so much hype about our youth players, like Adam Morgan, Michael and Goo, bloody Connor Cody. I mean, I know Connor Cody's had a great, like, decent since, career, yeah. but <laughs> Cody was meant to be the next Gerard. You know what I mean? So um, look, look, they're all youngsters. I'm never going to hate them. Jordan Rossiter, like even the likes of Jay Spearing, even though they played in the Ben Woodburn, um, yeah, when Budburn, who's still in our books, is it? No, he's not. He is, but he's oh just, my just lord, him, just sell him, just sell him, just we sell must him. have gave him like a six or seven year deal or something as his yeah. pro contract. He's like crazy. You, you know how Chelsea have um had Lucas Piers on that that guy they just kept oh yeah. Him. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Ben Woodburn had a great game in preseason this year, and then everyone was like, oh, "Maybe he could start." <laughs> oh, <fair. laughs> um, Napri, um, I personally would not. Well, I wouldn't mind mm. it, of course. I think he's a great player, but I, I'm not like all out for him. I think uh, Nkunku, the next Werner. Um, I hope he doesn't turn out like Werner. I, I think that's more with the Werner thing. I think that's more of your club and your manager, to be honest. I think if I wouldn't have him now because I think the damage has been done. But if we signed Werner directly from Dortmund, I think he would have he would have smashed it for us. I don't know yeah, what you mate, think. Same, same, and I agree. I completely agree. Um, oh my light, my lighting, and then he fell on me. Um, Rue, two thousand and one. Ossiman. How's Ossin Ossiman? Uh, I don't think he'll leave Napoli. Um, I think Oss. Uh, I think he's a great striker. But I this is one I heard. It won't. It wouldn't happen. But Tammy Abraham, Mister Arjun, I know you're back in chat now, uh, and you think he's going to come back to Chelsea. But this guy, he's scoring bags of goals. He won't leave. But maybe down the line, do you reckon he we he, we we'd go in for him, or do you think he's never going to be on that level where? He's unreal. Is it just a Roma thing? Is it just a Serie A thing? I think Serie A is a great league, by the way. No hate. But is he good enough for Liverpool Football Club? Is he good enough for any of the big clubs in England? I don't know. But um, leave it. We're going to get on to our dream windows. Ben, if you want to start. Dream window. It's simple for me. Um, I think... The two that are the one that we've got in potentially two, Carvalho and Ramsey. I think they're two brilliant signings. What we need, um, and then obviously we were told sure many, wasn't we? Um, yeah. We were strung along man with that, and I really bought sure many stocks from early. I kept telling people he was coming because that's what we were being told. We were told that <laughs> his priority is Liverpool. That's the club he wants, um, but obviously. Real Madrid didn't get Mbappe. So I think that just gave them all the money they were going to sign, pay for Mbappe. They, they're going on a mad one now. They're getting sure many. Um, they're probably not going to stop there either. So 
unfortunately, when you know, I, I saw that that deal was going to be a hundred million in everything. So like the fee, the add-ons, everything will be a hundred million, and that's just not something we'll do. It's not something we'll ever do, in my opinion. Um, so for me, I'm gutted because I, I did do extensive research into him. I watched him. I, I watched comps. I looked at his stats. I bought stocks, not literally, but I, you know what I mean. Um, and it didn't happen, which was a shame. But yeah. like you said, mate, Bellingham, if that comes off next season, it's a risk because going into the season with no midfielders, I would personally buy someone for like the 20 million mark as like a, a stock gap, somebody that can come in and do a job um, and then get Bellingham next summer because, look, I love Bellingham. I said it from a long time. Oh, no, all my old tweets about Bellingham won't be good. Oh. Anyway, um, <laughs> Bellingham and Henderson, I don't know if you noticed, whenever they go to England, they're always, always together, together yeah. always together. And I think Agent, Agent Jordan is uh, eagerly looking up at his uh, successor. So, um, look, if Bellingham comes to us, then he will be here for 10, 15 years. So but that'll be next summer, though, not this summer. This summer, forward-wise, um, Nkunku, an amazing player. Uh, there's no Bundesliga attached with him. He, I'm confident to say he'll smash it wherever he goes. Um, any well, for us at least, I think he'd fit in our system like a glove. Um, but one player for the center forward role, and this is this was always my Firmino replacement, to be honest. I never really considered Mane or Salah being replaced by this guy, but my long term Firmino would have been Jao Felix, and I think, yeah, that is one a lot of people have forgotten <laughs> about. Yeah. Um, I just think he signed for the completely the wrong club, like a it's player like... with his skill set should not be playing for a part of the bus team that just. Don't want to play nice football. He should be the Burnley. team that played the most glorious football yeah. of all time. Yeah, he's being a dog. He should have gone to like Barca. Well, mate, he should have yeah. come to us, man. Like, what's he doing? And I, mm. you know, they're not going to let go of him unless it's ridiculous money, like hundred mil plus. So, like, unless that changes, he's going to have to just hold it and just play Simeone ball. And man, Simeone ball is it? That's... <sighs> Poor guy. But look, he's made his bed. He now needs to lie in it. So, yeah. Uh, he he's actually a great Firmino replacement. I'm trying to think of who else you could get, but there's probably no one else. He's got age on his side. Mm. I think apart from the obvious, like, but even like the likes of like Haaland and Mbappe, they're they're not Firmino. Like and that's they're not that sort of style. Um, they're like proper, proper out and out in behind forwards. I know what you mean. Yeah. So Felix is, yeah, Felix is a good one to be honest. Um, focal point guys. If we get Felix, we don't need anyone else. Uh, look, and Kunku could be that. I think like he's a he's he has that sort of Mane type of dynamism, and that sort of. He has the numbers, man. Like his numbers are outrageous. So yeah, I would, I would, um, I would, um, I'd do that. Um, I would. So you would want. So for you, it'd be Bellingham. Yep. And Kunku. And that it. And then the two youngsters. With the two, yeah. So yeah. Ramsey and uh, Carvalho. Yeah. But no. that's just. It's not career mode, you know what I mean? So we'll see, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I would um I would um go I'd wait if we have to wait a year, but we're guaranteed to get Bellingham. Mm. I'd um I'd watch um 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 another year of our midfield happily. I I'll, I'll happily watch our midfield. People man, we've got depth in midfield. Yeah, it's it, like people complain about um complain like our 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 um our depth, but um not our depth. Oh, I'm all over the place here. People complain. People complain about like the quality in midfield, but I'm I'm happy. Like if we have to wait a year for Jude Bellingham, we might get Joe along. So look, whatever happens, happens. Um, I think the the main priority for us is that forward, the number nine. Uh, so for me. I've said it all stream. Harry Kane. Imagine we got Harry Kane. So, look, it's never going to happen a million years, to be honest. But, Barry Kane, uh, Felix. If not, i will probably go in Kunku deep down. I think yeah. I think if you want a minor replacement, that's probably your guy. Um, Rue, 
with a clutch super chat. Jeez. Thank you, thank you very much. Regardless, yeah. our team is crying out for technical and creative players, especially in that midfield. We've got the likes. I'm sorry, I don't like this point because Ru, I really appreciate the super chat and the fact I'm replying to it in an honest way is showing how much I appreciate it. I think Thiago, Cater, um, and then the likes of Jones and Elliot, like, like they're ballers. They have creative like ability. They they're not. <laughs> Like what, what? Like I don't think we need creativity. I think we just need someone that can go box to box now, which is why yeah. Bellingham. Bellingham is such a great shout, and it's why I'm always on the um, uh, Jacob Ramsey hype. Because, like, come on, man, like, he, what? Whatever, whatever. We'll we'll see what we do. I, I'm I'm my head is scrambled. There's so long to go. I don't know who's going. I don't know who's staying. So it's it's such a hard window to predict. Like normally you can mm. sort of predict windows, but this is actually quite a hard one. All I know is we're getting a forward, but I can't guarantee a midfield. I I don't think I I reckon we'd wait for Bellingham if there was a report of that yesterday. I can't remember who it was, but um, I I've got a feeling that's going to happen. They will push for Bellingham. I'd be happy with that to be honest. I know it, there'd be a massive meltdown on Twitter, which is why, mate. You probably being off there probably do you the world of good. This is listen. I have said this to my brother. This is probably a blessing in disguise because my screen time on Twitter is not healthy, bro. It's not healthy. I'll tell you that much. I don't think anyone's. It is not healthy. So look, I don't use any other apps to be fair. Just use like WhatsApp and Instagram a little bit here and there. But apart from that one, so. yeah, guys. I don't know, guys. Drop in the comments what your dream window would be because for me. You've got Calvin Ramsey at right back as Trent's backup. You've got Fabio Carvalho. Um, but I don't know, Pri, I don't know where he plays. Like, like he's played off the striker, but I'd, like you said, this is the problem. Everyone wants Bellingham. So, like, the Liverpool pool, he's going to want to really have to play for us, for us to to get him. But, chat, let us know your, let us know your ideal windows. Like, DJ, Nkunku Ramsey... Jude Carvalho, yeah, pretty much what Ben said. Like that would be an unbelievable window, in my opinion. Um, and look, if we have an, a backlog of <laughs> backlog of depth, um, then yeah, I think I think I think we know who we want. There is what is the striker market? The striker market isn't the best. There was a time where people like, well, it would have been, but Haaland's gone, Mbappe, Mbappe's staying. Um, Darwin Nunes, people, just let us know what you think about Darwin Nunes. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what Ben's doing, um, but yeah, he's alive, I think. No, nah, man, people coming in my room when I'm streaming. Not on. <laughs> it happens. Uh, Wines, I'll uh, Lewa, Lewa, Sanchez. Oh, Renato Sanchez. This guy, he was. Oh. Yeah, Do we I want our medical that. guys to have more work on their hands or what? Like some of the players like Kingsley Coman and Sanchez and he's like Abu oh, Diaby. Yeah. Diaby was unreal, but he was he was in the medical room like three quarters of the season. We need we need reliability. You need players that are reliable. Lewandowski, like I said, if we got Lewa, even though it goes against everything we do as a club, we say to Lewa, mate, two years under Klopp again. You score bags of gold. You'll do it in the prem. The limelight will be on you. The fans will love you. Come. He might. I don't know what his wage situation is like. I assume that his demands are going to be high, especially if he leaves on like a really cheap deal. Um, which he will. That's the thing about Lewa. He's he wants to go, so they're gonna have to get rid of him. Kamada, Kamada mm. is Kamada's a good shout, but I don't think he's the type of player we need. I, I think we need a nine. I've, I've, I've. Anise has gone. Kane, Jude, Anthony. Anthony's, a, Anthony's a shout. I don't know about Anthony. The thing is, who do we have backing up to Salah? Uh, Ali's, Ali's gone on about um Saka all stream, and for me, Saka's the type of person that's going to want to start, and he's a right winger through and through. And I'm sorry, you're not starting ahead of Mo Salah at the moment. Unbelievable player, for me, second best right winger in the league. But yeah, 
Again, our policy, are we coughing up 100 million for players? I don't know. Musa Diaby, the Euro expert, always comes on the channel, always raves about this guy. Um, he's another right winger. He's going to want to start. If he's happy to sit behind Salah, perfect. It'll be like having Robertson and Simicas, but right wing options, world class. Um, but yeah, uh, Ben, anything else, mate? Um, we've gone for our squad. Yeah, what I would say is like we don't really know names. I think this is one of the weirdest transfer windows so far in terms of like not really knowing what we're getting. Um, when the window when it's not open, but you know what I mean. Like usually we have a good idea of what what we want and what we're gonna go for and the, the kind of players that are available for us. But what I will say again, someone's just put Pulisic. You do, there's just new players every day, mate. And yeah. they're like it's kind of hard to keep up with. But what we'll say is trust the guys that are making these decisions. Uh, trust the club that they will back the manager and get who he wants. Um, you know, we've barely made a bad signing under Klopp. So whoever comes in, whether it's somebody I, I highly rate, whether it's somebody I don't really know of, whether it's somebody I don't rate, like I'm just going to get behind it because to be honest with you, Diogo Jota, when we signed him, I was at the time thinking like 40-something mil for Diogo Jota. Mm, really? But look, he's come in and he's done an excellent job. So I, I'm i just easy. I don't care who we sign. As long as we do sign players, because I do think this is, this year we do need it, Um I'm happy, and I think for the the first time in a long time for me, I do back the the guys at the top that are making these decisions. So yeah, I, I'm I'm happy, I'm confident, and um, I'm going to predict us to win the league again after the the window shuts. Oh, we're winning the league, guys! Mark it in, bookmark it, whatever, put it down. Like we're winning the league. I have absolutely no doubt. I think I think. Um... I think it's just destiny, to be honest. And you know, I like to believe in my, my, my intangible spiritual things. So whatever you can make of that, what you want, people. But look, I think we're winning the league, and there's no stopping the road. And uh, do you remember and, what Klopp said about Istanbul? Book yep, your hotels, book, people. Book your hotels. Let's do it. Um, yeah, Rafinha was back in the day. Rafinha was the guy for me, but yeah, <laughs> he's a right winger, and like, is he going to start ahead of bad Salah attitude as well? As well. I think I think like he still has there's so much potential in him, but I think um he's not the player for us now. And he's not going Barcelona. Oh mate, they can't afford anyone at the moment. I'm not gonna True. lie. So um winning the league against KDB passing to Haaland. Yeah, KDB to Haaland is a scary sight. I'm not denying that. But like they're signing Haaland to win the Champions League. So let's see if they do that. That's no what chance. I'm going to say. They're, they're signing him to win the league. So, um, yeah, uh, I think that's it, to be honest. We've gone through our squad. Terrier, I don't know. Yeah, Barca can't afford a packet of crisps right now, which is why Gavi, we forget about this guy, Gavi. Oh, yeah. I, is he coming? Is he not? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's happening anymore. I'm not going to lie, Ben. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who we're gonna get. Mate, the thing is, yeah, I need to make sure that like, I've got an active Twitter account that because you know when you get suspended, like literally yeah. back whatever account you got. So obviously my burner phone, obviously you know it is what it is. <laughs> um, it's not a burner phone. Don't worry, I I, I don't do things. Um, it's just a spare phone that I found. Um, I've made an account. So hopefully <laughs> I can still keep up with transfer rumors because imagine not having Twitter on transfer season, bro. Yeah. Crazy. It'll be like the old we... days where you just tune in on you put Sky Sports news Sky on. Sky Sports, and you see yeah. Breaking news. You hear you, you're going to miss out on a lot of here we goes, a lot of oh, yeah. a lot of United winning the transfer window, a lot of um Fabrizio Tapini. Fabrizio, yeah, Tapini. <laughs> Twitter's the funniest place on earth. I'm telling you, it's such a weird. Like everyone's just, I don't know. I just, it's it's yeah. Ben, you've got a trap phone. Um, <laughs> guys, it's been 90 minutes, 90 long minutes. Me and Ben have just done a whole 90 minute match deciding who we're keeping, wow. who we're selling, who we want, who we don't want. The chat, this has been one of my favorite chats. You've been amazing, you've been respectful, but you've been happy. You've been a bit, been a bit weird, but we're, we're both weird people, so. 
And stay tuned as well because the season's finished, but me and Ohms are going nowhere. So we're going to keep thinking of ideas like this, different people coming on, and uh, we'll we'll keep you all entertained whilst the Reds are out of action. Yeah, we've got, we got loads of content. And honestly, you think pre-season is like far away. It's not far away. It'll be back and it'll be like, oh, what's our starting team going to be? It's like, oh, is is this youngster going to be the next Stevie G? And it'll just be like a, <laughs> just, a, just a normal normal guy. Um, <laughs> it's been a normal guy. But uh, yeah, um, on Sunday, exclusive for you Redfellas fans, um, Chris is actually going to do pretty much the same video, but I think the production on it is going to be a bit higher. They're going to actually have a tier list. Um which um, I may be making. Copying so, our ideas. Man. Yeah, I know. I know. But look, we're the young bucks. We're the guys with the creative juices. Um, Chris is just there. Chris Tapino. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no. We got Chris uh, and all the red fellas. Yeah, chat, you've been amazing. You know what to do. Smash the like button. Um, leave your comments. Uh, and yeah, share this video. We, we appreciate you a lot. And we'll be back next Thursday. So yeah, have a good one. And let me outro this. You know, the younger generation. We've got a better voice than the older generation.